In this video, we will discuss how we can determine whether or not a system is stable by looking at the pole locations of the transfer function h of s. So to begin, let's think a little bit about poles. And this is a somewhat of a review of the uh, pole zero plot video. A pole that is to the right of the imaginary axis in the complex plane, so the one I've drawn here, corresponds to an increasing exponential. Complex poles also correspond to exponentially increasing sinusoids. So basically anything that is to the right of the imaginary axis, this area that I'm shading in, corresponds to a time signal that increases without bound. Now, we know from our previous discussions of stability that a system is stable if, for a bounded input, the output is bounded. So how can we uh, look at that in terms of pole locations to determine whether or not a system is stable. Well, it turns out to be quite simple. You'll recall that the output of a system, y, is the transfer function times the Laplace transform of the input. And stability means that if x of t is bounded, so the magnitude of x of t is less than some constant, this implies, if a system is stable, that the magnitude of y of t is less than some other constant. If that's true, the system's stable. So the question is, if we know that the magnitude of x is bounded, what conditions do we have to put on h on this guy to make sure that y will be bounded. Well, if x is bounded, then x of s will have no poles in the right half plane, because if it had poles in the right half plane over here, then it would have a component that increases exponentially. So that means that x is going to have poles either in the left half plane like this, or perhaps poles on the imaginary axis. Okay. We know that the poles of y, of y of s, will be the combination of the poles of x of s and of h of s, because we're multiplying the two Laplace transforms uh, unless there's cancellation of a pole by a zero, then all of the poles of y of s will be the poles of h and the poles of x. So in order for y to have no poles over in the right half plane, we'll keep crossing this out to remind you that it's bad, we need to have that h has no poles over in the right half plane because if h does have a pole in the right half plane, which I've made such a mess of now, here we'll see if we can, if h has a pole over here, then clearly y will also have this pole, and so there will be, um, y of t will grow without bound. So basically this tells us what the requirement is for h, to represent a stable system, it has to have no poles in the right half plane. So that's the basic result. Let's get rid of this ugly complex plane and talk about one particular case that you need to know about. Okay, now it is possible for x We'll make x and x's poles in this green color. If x has a pole at the origin, or perhaps a pair of poles on the imaginary axis, uh, 
the pole at the origin corresponds to a unit step function. The pole on the imaginary axis corresponds to a sinusoid that does not grow over time. The amplitude does not grow, but it also does not go to zero. So if x has poles here, then x is bounded, and so it's a viable signal to multiply, uh, to multiply its transform by h to see whether or not you get something that um, uh, grows without time, or without bound. Now, if h also has a pole at the origin, this is what we call a double pole. And a double pole at the origin, uh, this would be 1 over s squared, a double pole at the origin actually has an inverse Laplace transform that is uh, proportional to t. So in this case, even though x had one pole and h had one pole at the origin, the inverse Laplace transform of y will have a term that increases without bound. Okay, so you can see that the restriction that you have no poles in the right half plane is not quite enough to make sure things are okay. Uh, and a similar situation would happen if h had these complex poles that are on the imaginary axis in the same location of x, then you get a sinusoid whose amplitude increases linearly. So whenever a system, this h that we've specified, has poles on the imaginary axis, we say that it's marginally stable. It's stable as long as you do not put an input x into it that has poles at the same point that h does, because double poles on the imaginary axis lead to uh, time signals that increase linearly as a function of t. So they're unbounded. So a system is stable without reservation if it only has poles in the left half plane. A system is marginally stable if it has poles either in the left half plane or on the imaginary axis. But if a system has even a single pole in the right half plane, then you know it's going to be unstable. So that describes stability and pole locations.